Going high is kind of a double-edged sword. You're either going to be into deer or you're going to be into no deer. If they have their feed, if they have their water, if they have their cover, and there's going to be zero pressure, bucks and does will not migrate down until they have to. My theory of go high right now, even in third season, in Colorado, first week of November is going to pay off dividends because you're going to set yourself away from people and then hunt deer like deer are meant to be hunted on their terms. A couple chains. That's all you need. Yeah. Going into this hunt, this was going to be Neville's first mule deer hunt ever. He grew up in the Midwest. You know, he's a big bow hunter, so he's hunted a lot of whitetails, but he's never hunted mule deer before. Home sweet home. Tomorrow morning's the day of reckoning. Yeah. This afternoon, I want to get out too. Yeah, hopefully it clears up a little bit. Yeah. Is it still snowing? Yeah, it's snowing. It's a freaking winter wonderland. What, well, what are you gonna do? Hope Santa comes tomorrow. <laughs> Brings me some gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like 18 inches of snow. Yeah. I think that's gonna start to push him down. Oh yeah. When we came up here, I'm guessing we probably had six inches, maybe seven. I'd say, yeah. And then since we've been here, we've probably gotten another seven, eight. Yeah, easy. It's a lot of snow. October snowstorms aren't bad because deer know it melts, but like November snowstorms. Plan is to scratch this camp spot, pack up as fast as we can, and get off the mountain, go hunt some lower country. Still find some stuff with good snow, but not this high, not 10,700 feet. I think it would have been good if we didn't get that extra dump. Like six inches would have been fine. <laughs> I just want to make it up here safely and not get really stuck. We're literally 20 yards from the top of the hill. I was very much regretting my whole decision to go high right there, especially taking the vehicle that high. Um, we've already burned up two full days of hunting. And I, I honestly felt really bad. I was turning to Neville and like, hey, I'm, you know, we might have just, you know, destroyed the whole beginning part of our hunt. Got about a fourth and ten. Down by six. We need a touchdown. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's gonna rip this one good. Get off there! Come on! Yes! Oh, he's gonna go high! Go high! Go high! Go high! Uh, oh, shoot! Best moment of the hunting trip so far, right there. Bucks there. 
Big buck's right there, tearing up a bunch of brush. Smaller buck, and there's another smaller buck over here. He split up from the other two bucks. And that's kind of walking downhill. But he's just cruising right now. He's not, looks like he's maybe looking for does a little bit. And he's also feeding. Um, but he's definitely taking it really cautious. He keeps looking all around. He's an awesome deer. Really, really good buck. We got a thick, thick juniper patch off to our left. And if he gets in those, we won't be able to see him at all. And he's working his way toward a juniper patch. The buck's at 700 yards right now. Came from 2,000 yards away, all the right below us. He's supposed to stop moving. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's stay low. Stay super low. Let's just go right down there. He's running. He's in the. He's getting in those. He's in the junipers. We decided our best interest right now was to regather all of our gear up. We we cannot effectively hunt right from where we're at. It's always bucks are so far away from our spot. We got to back back in and back back in November adds a lot of challenges. We're gonna be sitting pretty up there. We're gonna shoot him. Right up on top of that rim. Big old four by four, he's super wide. He's so far away right now. It's hard to get footage of him. Let's figure out where he's gonna bed and go up there and Shoot this buck on the way up. Bang, bang. Know how to kill deer? Go high. I don't care what season it is. Go to the top. When we saw that deer pretty far off, you know, you look at it and you kind of prepare yourself mentally like, okay, this is going to be a decent hike in. And then once we got to the top, we also realized, okay, it's about 20 degrees colder than where we're normally at by the truck. We got up there and we wanted to kind of sit and wait because we watched that big giant 4x4 four four kind of work his way in this little old sagebrushy flat. And I think that was going to be our best bet, just to wait until he came out to present a shot. See that steam coming off? Tipsies? You saying 10 degrees? It had been, it was 14 at the truck. I'm 
toes are straight and numb. <laughs> I don't even know what toes are anymore. <laughs> I think today's in the negatives. Yeah, 20 below, I think. It's probably in the negatives. Yesterday was 14 at the truck when we left and we got up on top. I figured it was probably a little less than 10. And today it feels brutally cold. It's gotta be dipping in the negatives for sure. We got two bucks over here. You think there might be a bigger one with them. And it's such a weird, like, flat. You can't see them because all these dips. So we might just walk straight at them. Hopefully, bump a big one. <laughs> Shoot. And it stops at 80 yards? Yes. It takes like two hours. They might even be burning hot right now. I wouldn't even know. All right, now we can't find a deer literally anywhere inside all this awesome train. So we're gonna go just slowly walk back towards camp. There's been a bunch of bucks up on the stage flat above us. Hopefully we'll find them somewhere in these timber flats on the way back. Maybe there's no deer because they all froze. Maybe they're all sitting inside our tent right now. Probably. Drinking beers, smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Where that terrain is, it's super flat. You don't understand there's dips here and there. Which dark timber? The second group on the right. Where you see dark timber on the left where camp is, and there's no dark timber. No, you see dark timber yeah. again. So when I was looking through my scope sometimes, I couldn't see anything, and then he could see stuff. And as this whole thing is going on, which is 15, 20 minutes, I had my gloves off. Oh my hands. I was just ready to shoot, so I had my finger on the trigger, hand on the barrel, all that stuff. Your adrenaline's going right then, and so you're not really knowing that you're cold. But once that moment went away where the buck finally went over the it's hill, fun, it? Um, looking over at Neville, like, I could feel the pain in his face. 450 yards. I said, good God, what is going on? What a junk show. I remember my first deer hunt. <laughs> this is my first deer hunt. <laughs> True. One of these days we'll have some deer meat. I know, right? What to do? What to do? It's a tough one because all the deer are up on these sagebrush areas and they're hard to hunt them because you can only just basically stumble into them. And so it's like you just gotta get lucky. 
try it one more time in the evening and then do something different tomorrow. But I don't know what to do different tomorrow because tomorrow's our last like full day of hunting. Right there on the edge. That one looks like it could be a four point though. I know, that's what I was thinking. I'll put my, I'll put my spotter out. No, this is like your 115 four point. Go uh -oh. kill him. Let me eat. Good deer now. I agree. Sage is completely flat, so we're guessing probably 450. Getting ready to shoot, and boop! Off that went running. I don't know if they caught our wind or what's been done. And now they're gone. We see 10 bucks a day right now. One but one shooter a day, and we can never capitalize because it's so freaking flat. Nothing's going right. There's no way they went at us. That wind. I don't think so either. That wind was blowing this way. No. I got spooked by some coyote. Deer being deer. Oh, Nothing's going right. You know, we're already we're already down on ourselves talking about how we messed up so many other opportunities beforehand. We're right here right now. Instead of just trying to stay warm, jumping our teepee, we're like, hey, let's just run around this rim right now. And let's check off this backside where we've checked a little bit here and there, but we really weren't seeing a lot in there. And that right there uh, saved our hunt. Oh my gosh. Did that just happen? I saw him. He's, he's down. Yeah, he's down. Four, 432 yards. We're over here. Frostbit, sons of bitches, talking about all of our sorrows. I have honestly no clue what this buck is. All I saw was a gigantic frame. Looked super wide. So I took a shot, 432 yards, and he just tipped right over. Really look at this canyon for four days straight and see a couple does, some small bucks. Small bucks, that's it. Oh my gosh, that's good. 
with him like Oh my lord. <laughs> this is a giant. <laughs> what? I just killed the biggest deer of my life. Oh my god. <laughs> Fully mature. Look at the big white face. <laughs> what are you. How? I can't even, I don't even, can't say anything right now. Worked our butts off. Dude, I'm not kidding you. And I shot the biggest, I shot the biggest deer of my life. Guys, I don't even know what to say. Colorado. Unreal. Unreal place, you just never know. I obviously expected us to walk away with, with two bucks in Colorado. But I think going through what we did, all the struggles, all the lows, to see to see a deer like that's one thing. To find uh, an opportunity to take a buck like that on public land is another thing, and then have it all work out the way it did, and just make it from that big roller coaster of emotion. You know, hunting hunting with Neville on his first mule deer hunt it is literally going to be the hunt I will always remember. During the time, it's like this is terrible. This is the worst thing ever. What am I doing? But it's always when you get back and you look back, it's like, that was the best hunt I might ever go on in my whole entire life. I'm feeling a big fat burger. It's calling my name at the, some little diner. I need a big fat burger. I think a burger would be a great call. I might even eat a mountain house. I kind of like them. <laughs> burger and then go back up to our truck at a mountain house. I mean, just I might just sleep outside feet. just to keep my feet cold. <laughs> I really want to brush my teeth. Sicko. I forgot my toothbrush.